Okay, let's start the session now. Uh, okay. Help. So yep. I'm doing intro part. Okay, good morning and welcome you all in this emerging technology webinar. Archie D said, I'm a host for this session, guys. If you want any question and queries, please put question on our chat box. We will be there to help you out. Uh, then event sponsor for this webinar is Synergetics. So Synergetics is a learning India most distinguished learning company in IT technology. We are ready with our top class learning solution that can made be to fit every requirement in every sector across every industry around the globe. Our expensive greenfield solution include that is personal based onboarding solution, onboarding add-on solution, certification solution, certification add-on solution, reskilling solution, emerging technology training solution, certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution, latest technology training solution, sales pre-sales training solution, practice playbook solution, and architecting solution. Then today webinar is organized by ETC community and sponsored by Synergetics and Microsoft. Our ETC community is open to all the people who are interested in our emerging technology. Then you just need to install the Meetup app and you can follow our communities there. Then you have to follow code of conduct. Please note that no one is allowed to take screenshot of the presentation and cannot do screen recording. Also, if you have any technical issue related to the topic, you can use the chat box to ask your question. Today's speaker for this training, uh, Mr. Mahendra Shinde. He is a training uh, Devo, DevOps training consultant and working in Synergetics as a practice head. Agenda for this webinar, you will you will get an overview on the topic and about of it. Make sure guys you follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, uh, and YouTube for upcoming information and relevant content. Thank you. Now I would like to hand over this mic our speaker. He will continue ahead. Yeah, thank you, Archie. Yeah, hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Mahindra Shinde. Uh, welcome you all to this uh, session on GitLab. Yeah. So before we start with the session, I just wanted to know how many of you have used any DevOps tool or has worked with DevOps, either as a developer or as an operations operations team. Anyone? You can use a Teams feature of uh, yeah, raise the hands on Teams. I can see Mayur. Good. Fine. Amul, Amul has mentioned Jenkins. Yeah, that's good. That's applicable. OK, fine. OK, no worries. So I hope you people know what is DevOps, by the way. Anyways, we can spend another five minutes to work uh, to understand what is DevOps, and then we will move to GitLab as a DevOps platform. DevOps is basically a collaboration between developers and operations. So developers will interact and collaborate with operations team. Operations team will collaborate and uh, integrate uh, or uh, work with developers team to ensure that you are delivering a quality product to your end users, quality product to your customers. There are a lot much thing we can discuss about DevOps, but now there are lots of different resources available where you can know more about DevOps. When we talk about DevOps, there are three important aspects of DevOps. The first one is a DevOps as a culture where all the team members, all the stakeholders need to collaborate with each other. Communication is the key. Collaboration is the key. First one. Second one is set of available tools. How do you implement DevOps in your organization? There are a lot many different tools available. There are people who use Jenkins. There are people who use Hudson. Hudson is a uh, original project from which Jenkins is derived. Uh, there are people who use Azure DevOps. TFS or something like Circle CI, Travis CI, and there are a lot many other similar tools available in market. OK. And then the third thing is the automation. 
using these tools, you can automate your DevOps workflows. Now, when I say DevOps workflows, we are specifically looking at two important workflows, continuous integration and continuous delivery and deployment. CI, CD. You can set up your CI, CD workflows or you can automate your CI, CD workflows using tools like GitHub, Jenkins, or as your pipeline for that matter. So what is this tool called GitLab now? GitLab is a truly open source and readily available automation tool, a DevOps tool that let you automate your CI CD workflows. And also not just that, GitLab is not just limited to DevOps. You can truly implement DevSecOps with GitLab with lots of extensions that it has. And this is all we are going to discuss this in this two hours training. So I hope my screen is visible to all of you right now. We are discussing DevOps with GitLab. And here we will discuss uh, what is exactly GitLab, uh, how GitLab is available to all of us. GitLab is available as a SaaS service, software as a service. So you can just visit GitLab homepage, portal, sign up, create your own account, and start using it as easy as that. Or you can install GitLab server on your on-premise server and use it within your network, within your data center. Then we will discuss two important aspects of GitLab, uh, the GitLab project management, agile project management features which are built into GitLab, and GitLab pipelines which are used for CI and CD. So very first thing, what is a GitLab? GitLab is a DevOps platform that provides end to end all the features in the single platform. Now there are quite few people here like Mayur and uh, Amol and Manikandan. Three people here have mentioned Jenkins. Now, do you know what are the challenges that you face with Jenkins? When you use Jenkins as a DevOps tool? Anyone? Hello? Jenkins is an open source tool, freely available tool. You do not have to actually invest in licensing costs. But that at the same time, Jenkins has so many different plugins available and managing all those plugins and managing Jenkins itself could be a challenge. Frankly speaking, lots of Jenkins plugins are already out of support. And if you go to the plugin documentation site, you might see a notification that might pop up saying that this particular plugin is available for adoption. That means the original team of developers who have developed the plugin have no time to spend on the further development of that plugin. And therefore, they are simply put their plugin for adoption. So you can go adopt the plugin and continue maintaining that plugin further. Jenkins is an open source and widely used tool, but plugin management is a big, you can say, uh, you can say uh, uh, issue kind of. Lots many, lot many things you can implement in Jenkins, but Jenkins alone will not do anything. You need plugins. You need properly configured plugins and tools in Jenkins to use Jenkins for almost anything. GitLab, on the other hand, provides a single platform with all the features. You will be surprised to know that you, if you want to, let's say, do a code scanning, static code analysis, there is a tool right there built into GitLab. You want to manage the Agile projects. Now you cannot do Agile project management in Jenkins. Jenkins cover only the CI CD part. GitLab, on the other hand, provides project management, Agile project management. It even prepares a Kanban dashboard for you. And what more? GitLab also provides its own version control system. Okay or source code management, SCM tool. Any guess what source code management system GitLab use? Anyone? 
What kind of version control system GitLab use? Just look at the name. GitLab. The version control system GitLab supports is Git. Uh, Manish, it's not TFS. It's Git, G-I-T. Yeah, that's right. Many people have already re replied here with Git. That's good. So GitLab, unlike tools like Jenkins, GitLab has its own Git version control system. So it provides source code management system. It provides agile project planning system. It provides lots of built-in security tools like SAST, BAST, package scanning, and CI-CD. Everything in one single platform. And this is one of the quite interesting feature, as you can see. Yes, so this is one point. DevOps end-to-end -end, all features in a single platform is one of the, you can say, unique selling point, USP of GitLab. It has built-in automation tool. Like Jenkins CI, you have GitLab CI pipelines. Built-in source code management and built-in security tool. GitLab is not extension of Git, Manish. Rather, I would say Git is one of the component of GitLab. It's not an extension of Git. Git is different and GitLab is different. Even though GitLab is using the name of Git, it is just a small indicator that the version control system available in GitLab, GitLab focus only on word, one version control system, that is Git. Okay, that's the only version control system it provides. And it is one of the many features of GitLab. Okay, it's not an extension of Git. Security tool. Do anybody here know what is SAST and SA, SA, DAST? It's a competitor of Git, GitHub Actions or GitHub as a platform. Yes, Bitbucket, GitHub, and Azure. DevOps. It is a competitor to these three platforms. You are right, Chetan. It's an, a competitor, or you can say alternative to GitHub, Azure DevOps, and Bitbucket. Now, I had a question for you. Do you know what is SAST and DAST? Anyone? SAST is static analysis, static security analysis, security testing, and DAST is dynamic. In static, you get the source code, and if you check if the source code contains any kind of vulnerability, whether knowingly or unknowingly, your developer has a code which has some kind of security vulnerabilities, or you can say a piece of code which might be dangerous for us. SAST is you scan the source code. DAST, you don't have access to source code. You just scan the binaries, the final binaries, to check if there is any security loophole or security vulnerabilities included in your project or say, available in your project. Please remember, it's not always that security vulnerabilities are deliberately you know, placed there by your developers. There is also a possibility that your developers are using some third party dependencies. Now, every project uses third party dependencies, right? If you are a Java developer, you might be using Spring, Hibernate. If you are a .NET developer, you might be using some third party components in there, right? Dependencies in there. Yes, there might be a possibility that you have built a project which uses some third party dependencies, and those third party dependencies might have some kind of security loophole into them. So what do you do in that case? How do you know if all the packages dependencies that we have used in our project are safe to use? For that, you need package scanning. To give you an example of what kind of vulnerabilities I'm talking about, let's take example of Maven repository. Maven is, yes, Maven is a build tool used by Java developers. And let me show you one such third party package called JUnit. Sorry, not JUnit. Let's check Log4j. Now, why I'm using Log4j? Log4j 
is a very commonly used dependency in almost ja all Java projects, either directly or indirectly. You might either use Log4j directly, or you may use framework like Spring and Hibernate, which use Log4j indirectly. Now, let me show you one interesting example of this package vulnerability. If you scroll down a little, you will notice there were lots of vulnerabilities detected in older 2.x version of Log4j. Did you notice how many vulnerabilities were there in Log4j 2.13.1? Hello? These were the direct vulnerabilities and these were vulnerabilities, indirect vulnerabilities. If I randomly click on any vulnerability for getting the database, vulnerability database here, you will get the details like this. Uncontrolled recursion from self-referential lookup allows an attacker with control over thread context. So there is a loophole that might allow attacker to get control over individual thread. OK, so this means your code may be safe, but the dependencies your code uses might have certain vulnerabilities in them. So how do we safeguard our application then? To safeguard the application, you can use a tool called package scanning tool. What package scanning tool should do? A package scanning tool that will scan all the dependencies in your project and give you an immediate feedback whether all those dependencies are safe or whether one of or whether some of the dependencies have any vulnerabilities in them. So what do you think you will do if you found that your project is using some packages and those packages have vulnerabilities in them? What do you think? What would be your next plan of action? What you might do next? Yes, Manish, that's right. You, if you have integrated it with some ticket management system or some kind of support system, you can raise a ticket, assign a ticket to developer team and ask developer team to remove that package. So basically, let's not go in that detailed way. Simple terms, you can simply inform your developer to remove the package which has vulnerabilities into them and ask them to rebuild it again after fixing the dependency issues. And if you can do it while your code is still in development phase, it is not yet released to the customer, right? It would be much faster to fix, rebuild, and then deliver it to the customer, OK? But if you detect any kind of vulnerabilities after your product goes to production environment to the production stage, then it's going to be a big issue for you. Because fixing it after it enters into production, will be more costly, more time consuming, and your reputation is already destroyed. Are you getting my point? Yeah. So this is where GitLab gives you an advantage. So if you look at the type of services GitLab provides, basically. So GitLab provides end-to-end -end DevOps. Now, when I say end-to-end -end DevOps, these are list of services GitLab provide. So which phase you are in? Are you in planning phase? Are you just planning your software? If you are just planning for this particular uh, DevOps project, then team planning, portfolio management, design management, value stream management, documentation wikis and pages. This is all taken care of by GitLab. Now, please remember, Whatever features are in bright white color, they are already available. The one which are in this light blue color, they are 
available to early adopters. That means a uh, selected number of GitLab users will be given access to them. They are not generally available. Now this presentation, I created this presentation almost six months back. So there is a possibility that some of these features might be now available by default as a standard to everyone. So some of them might have become white now. I have to go back to GitLab documentation page and get a new uh, version of this diagram. Okay, so requirement management, quality management, DORA metrics, DevOps report, they are new features which are getting introduced here. For the project planning phase, then actual implementation phase, what are the features available? SCM, source code management, GitLab, anyways, provide you Git version control system or Git repositories. It also has code review workflow. Uh, Manish, Visual Studio subscription is totally irrelevant here because GitLab is not a Microsoft product. So it doesn't matter whether or, whether or not you have Visual Studio subscription. Is that clear? Irrespective of whether or not you have Visual Studio subscription, you can go and subscribe for GitLab. Of course, there are two versions of GitLab. The free version, which provides you basic feature, basic set of features, and then there is a paid version. Paid version will give you all these features. Okay, and it's an alternative to Azure DevOps or it is a competitor here. Okay, fine. So we have source code management. We have code review workflow. I will explain you what exactly is code review. It is basically related to Git pull request. It also has a support for web IDE, cloud based IDE. Okay, so your individual developers don't even have to check in the code in their local machine to edit this. And of course, GitLab CLI. GitLab now also has its own command line interface for people who prefer command line over web interface. And remote development, a feature which is coming up now. I guess this might already be a streamlined feature available to everyone. Verify continuous integration. You can run the test. You can uh, run unit test, integration test right there from the CI workflow. We have got code testing and coverage. We have merged trains, merging the one branch to another branch, reviews, secret management, CI CD visibility reports. Basically, they are planned. For security part, we have SAST, we have secret detection, we have dashed dynamic application security test, we have API security, we have first testing, we have SCA software composition analysis. Software composition analysis is like you have a big complex project. SCA will actually identify what your project is actually made, built of or what all components you are using directly or indirectly. Composition analysis, what your software is composed of. In case if you are using container images, you have feature for container scanning and code quality. Code quality is a available feature for uh, early adapters. For packaging, if you build already a software, the already built software, the binary file that you create, if you are a .NET developer, you will create a TLL file. If you are a Java developer, you will create a jar file, a var file, something like that. So those are packages. So we have package registries. In case instead of using regular packages, if you are using container images, then GitLab provides its own container registry as well. And not just that, GitLab also provides its own Helm chart registry if you want. If your dependencies are already managed somewhere else, you are already using some kind of package management system like JFrog, for example, you can create a dependency proxy. Okay, for that, for other third party dependencies. Then we have tools for the deployment, continuous delivery. Any idea, by the way, what is continuous delivery? Anyone? I'm talking about this continuous delivery. Continuous delivery means delivery and deployment. Code goes to production. Okay, Mayur, 
please remember in devops we never put our code directly in production code should actually go via multiple different environments it goes to the environment run few tests then it gets delivered to qa environment then it goes to staging and then finally it goes to production and when you automate this process that is continuous delivery release orchestration releasing the product in the production basically feature flag management feature flag management like uh, whether or not a certain feature should be made available to user or not this is where you dif you differentiate technical uh no i didn't uh, actually uh, watch anything on x today by you crowd strike no anyways so we have continuous delivery we have feature flag uh, management and uh, we have release orchestration we have auto devops and everything uh, mayur uh, this may be an interesting feature that code can directly go to the production but nobody is going to adopt it immediately the standard practice of release, releasing it to dev then to qa then to test and then finally to production is something that industry is going to follow even now yes chetan you are right okay so we have feature flags we have release orchestration we have environment management what is environment management do you think your dev environment your qa environment and your production environment would be exactly the same okay yeah so all the environment might be different the environment might have their own special configuration and not component it is possible to get a vulnerability see it it does not depend whether it is a url or is a component now what do you mean by a url url means whether a dependency is an api it depends on an api right and not a dll or jar file if you use service oriented architecture instead of component based architecture you depend on apis external apis but then for those external apis the apis might need certain configuration some of the external apis might need access token to authenticate and authorize you all that information can be stored in environment most of the time your dev environment which will be design as a non ha environment what is non ha environment what is ha any guess manish high availability yeah that's right so your dev environment might be non ha environment but your staging and production might be highly available environment so their environment configuration also would be different so you store and you manage the environment configuration right here from devops uh, uh, gitlab auto devops auto devops is for lazy people let's say i have a java project created on gitlab and i don't want to spend my time in setting up the ci cd workflow on my own i will go and simply enable auto devops and let gitlab check my code gitlab to decide okay looks like this, there is a pom.xml in this code okay that means it must be a java code so let's write all the instruction to build it that is auto devops okay there is nothing new in here the only difference is in regular ci cd workflow you go and create a workflow in auto devops let gitlab automatically generate that for you gitlab has this feature also but remember if you use auto devops you have to make sure that you are following lots of conventions okay deployment management how do you manage the deployment and infrastructure as a code infrastructure as a code is where you deploy or you tear down the entire infrastructure from your ci cd workflows now this is more commonly used when you are deploying on yes more like containerization but it's not limited to containerization by you infrastructure as a cloud is more associated with cloud so let's say if you have a workflow where your application need to be deployed in dev environment you know what you do 
you set up the dev environment right from your ci cd workflow you use let's say for example you use some kind of template or some kind of automation tool like terraform for example right to set up the environment on cloud deploy your application to that environment run the test and if test have failed or passed go back and destroy that environment using a workflow yes like a cloud formation stack chetan right cloud formation stack azure resource manager template terraform there are a lot many different automations available and gitlab basically support all those automations okay and if we talk about containers chetan uh sorry mayur if you talk about containers gitlab also has support for gitops okay so you can provision your uh, uh, containers on the fly okay so these are deployment features gitlab also has support for monitoring continuous monitoring service desk incident management is already available these two features are already available in gitlab on call schedule management and error tracking these are features which are currently in early phase plant features tracing logging and metrics that means you don't even need additional external monitoring tool anymore now is it compatible with azure devops manish if you look at the set of features available here with gitlab you will notice that it actually provides lot many additional features than azure devops azure devops support many of these features but you need an external service for that are you getting my point yeah and on aws aws is a cloud platform and you will be surprised to know that aws is actually copying some of the features gitlab provide like for example aws has its own ci cd workflow right ci workflow basically uh, where you create a build spec file and much of the syntax of aws build spec file is actually very similar to how you define ci cd workflow in gitlab now i don't know who copied whom that i will let you to decide and explore and find out the syntax is very similar not exactly same it's not like you can take the gitlab pipeline and put it in aws code build and expect it to work not like that right but it is very different extremely different than azure pipeline and github actions sonar cube can be used for static code analysis yes ritesh and that too if you are using something like github or azure devops or jenkins then you need sonar cube if you use gitlab gitlab gives you two options if you use free version of gitlab you have to use sonar cube but if you use paid version of gitlab gitlab has its own static and static code analysis tool okay and do you don't need an additional third party sonar cube isn't it interesting ritesh which one is popular gitlab ci cd or github action a uh, chetan compared to github action gitlab is a old and well established product github action is relatively new product okay it is relatively a new product compared to this one static analysis of code static analysis means you get the code and you find out whether users or oh, sorry developers have followed all the best practices there okay it is actually to evaluate quality of code and when you integrate it in ci cd when you integrate it in ci cd you get one additional metric code quality metric you can even analyze how your code quality is improving whether your code quality is improving or whether your code quality is declining whether you are improving your code or whether you are your code quality is decreasing you can get that okay you use basically something like sonar cube or a sonar cloud to actually do that kind of scanning so you will notice when i say end to end devops gitlab provides 
almost all necessary tools, whatever you might need to implement DevOps properly. Right from planning, creation, that is implementation part, verification part, DevSecOps, secure part, packaging, deployment, monitoring. And it even has support for govern. That means every phase of DevOps, all the required tools, GitLab will provide. Auditing, compliance management, vulnerability management, dependency management, and software bill of material. All these features are available from GitLab. Now, how, where do you get this latest uh, uh, feature flag? Ritesh has mentioned, is it possible to implement third-party vulnerability check like OWAS? Yes, GitLab provides its own tool, plus GitLab allows you to integrate with other third-party tools as well. So let's do one thing. Let's visit GitLab and check what all features it does provide. GitLab.com. So this is GitLab. You can see this is their home page. You can get the free trial for it. But what I will do is I will go to the solutions part, right? I will go to the solutions part and let's see what all solutions do they provide. So they have security and compliance solutions, continuous integration and delivery solutions, software delivery, automated software delivery, value stream, agile, source code management, and GitOps. These are all the features available. Now, let's look at the pricing part because let me tell you why I'm looking at pricing. I'm just trying to compare what are the features you get from GitLab. So you will notice one thing under free tier. GitLab provides 400 compute minutes per month. Now, by comparison, it is actually much less than what Azure DevOps provide. Yes, it will uh, check the open source libraries like jQuery as well. Then if you go with GitLab premium, you get advanced CI CD features, user management, incident management, 10,000 compute minutes per month, and merge request, code reviews. You don't get code reviews in free trial, unfortunately. Then, ultimate edition. Now, this is the ultimate edition where you get DAST. You get security dashboard. You get vulnerability management, dependency scanning, dependency scanning for all open source projects. Now, when I say all open source project, it covers JavaScript. It covers Java. It covers, of course, Node.js, NPM dependencies. It covers Python dependencies. OK. It has container scanning. It can scan your container images for the vulnerability. It has static application security test. Multi-level epics for agile project planning. Enterprise agile planning, you can create a customized dashboards, Kanban dashboards. Portfolio management, you can define custom role. Value stream is already available and it has 50,000 compute minutes per month, right? Whereas under free trial, it was just 400. Now, if you compare all the features, here is the complete list. Can you see this? OK, this is something we will discuss later. Uh, GitLab Duo is basically an AI assistant. I'm not sure about uh, whether Cool is supported. You have to check the documentation for that. This is AI, right? right. If I go back to the solutions here. Wait a second, not solutions. Why GitLab? Now, this is the complete list of features currently supported by GitLab. Let me share the URL with you so you can also check what all features GitLab does provide. And for any feature, if you click on the feature link, name of that feature, it will show you details about it. So here, now they have customized it. You will notice they have made it more easy to understand the features provided by GitLab about project planning. Here, GitLab is alternative to Atlassian Jira. How many of you have used Jira? Atlassian Jira? Yes, Manish. So if you use GitLab, there is no separate Jira-like tool required. 
then source code management, code explanation, code review, code suggestion, GitLab CLI, web IDE, remote development. Remote development means your individual developer do not have to set up anything on their local machine. They can use web-based IDE. Web-based IDE is like they will open the browser, log in into GitLab, and simply launch the VS Code-like editor or uh, other editor options are also available, but VS Code is most commonly used one. That will open directly within a browser with environment pre-configured. That means your individual developers do not have to use same machine for development activity. A developer might be traveling and he will quickly view the code on his Android phone or uh, let's say iPad and any such data device which has internet and which has a browser. OK. It has continuous integration features where it is replacement for Jenkins. Are you able to explore all these features? Hello? Hello? What do you understand from this particular uh, uh, screen right now? Those people who are using Jenkins or any other open source tool, you will be using multiple tools for your DevOps workflow. Here, GitLab is a single tool that will replace all of these. Is that clear? The reason why the title of this session, if you have noticed, it is Harnessing GitLab Ultimate DevOps Platform is because it is one single DevOps platform where you can say that, OK, I will get GitLab and I will forget about all the other components that I need. I don't have to worry about version control systems, CI, CD like Jenkins. I can replace them with a single solution. Yeah. Just explore the page. I'll give you two minutes to explore it. And uh, your time. Wait a second. I've written. Your time starts now. Okay, time out. 
Any question about any such features now? Yeah, I'll I'll just scroll it up. Or let's do one thing. Let's make it little, uh, uh, you know, smaller. I have shared the URL uh, to visit this page. If you go to the URL, you can see this page uh, on your own screen. Root cause analysis and uh, log monitoring. OK, for log monitoring, you can see here uh, where is the log part? Yeah, it is observability. We have error tracking. We have uh, uh, service desk, incident management, etc. That is replacement for a tool called Sentry. Root cause analysis means uh, finding out what exactly has caused a bug or what exactly has caused a defect. OK, for that, uh, what you basically do is. Uh, you identify where exactly the issue is. Now, root cause analysis is a generic term here. OK, uh, we do that where every time we got a bug or every time we get any kind of uh, issues with the existing code. GitLab just provides you the necessary tools you have to do the root cause analysis. OK, good. So let's proceed now. So these are several features GitLab provide, and that's why I'm calling it end-to-end -end DevOps. How does it helps in fixing the vulnerabilities? It helps in fixing vulnerabilities by letting you know about the vulnerabilities and also giving you a hint. Like, for example, this particular version of J log 4 j has vulnerabilities in it, and it would give you a suggestion. Like, instead of using version 1.28, use version 1.30 or use version 3.0, something like that. So it will it will provide you a hint and you can follow that hint and try if. The next version or updating the version help you in re resolving all the errors in your code. Is that clear? What about if I get more errors while moving to a new version in your code? So Ritesh, what you do in this case is for this type of fix, a general generally used approach is that for these type of fix, you create a new branch in your version control system. In that branch, you try using a newer dependency version, which do not have any kind of vulnerability in it. You try to use a fix there. On that branch, you run the CI CD workflow to check if the change in that dependency or upgrading dependency to the newer version is fixing the issue or not. And if it works, you merge it into your main branch or development branch and continue using it. But if it doesn't work, then you raise a new issue, new bug, saying that the old code has a vulnerability. I cannot use that due to the vulnerability. But if, yeah, I will do a review later on for 10 minutes overview. But if it works, then it would be used 
to continue developing further the project. So basically what we do is we always implement this type of solutions in a new branch. And remember, Git as a version control system is well known for its lightweight branches. Rather, you know what is the most common issue with Git version control system? People, those people who use Git, they just create too many branches. Using just too many branches and branching hierarchies, basically. Fine. So what we will do now, I will show you a small demo because of course we cannot cover entire GitLab in this session, right? So what I will do is I'll give you a small demo on how you can sign up on GitLab and use it. So what I will do is I will visit GitLab like this. Let's type gitlab.com and you can either sign up or sign in. Sign up if you do not have an account, sign in if you already have a GitLab account. So I will use sign in. Now when I click sign in button, maybe I, I was too fast to click there. Now this is my user ID and password. And I'm not sure, maybe like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to log in here after so much longer time that GitLab is asking me to share my, this is basically a two-factor application here, two-factor authentication, right? Wait a second. I'm just trying to open the mailbox. For some reason, it's not allowing me to open the mailbox. Yeah, yeah there is a different updated application installed now. OK, so where is it? It has, OK, GitLab has sent me a verification code over my inbox, and I just have to use the same verification code here. Verify. Good. Verification succeeded. It is a kind of two factor of authentication. And it, it is here. So this is my GitLab account. You can sign up on GitLab using any of your email address. You can sign in using Hotmail account, Outlook account, Gmail account also. OK, so use any of those email accounts that you have. Sign up is free and best thing is you don't have to provide any credit card or debit card. So this is my sample projects over here. Now, the very first feature I'm going to explain you is the project planning or project management available on GitLab. So to show you an example, there are some community projects I can use basically. Explore some community project. Community project means projects which are open and anyone can actually go and explore them. To give you an example, these are the common GitLab projects. No, you cannot do that, Manush. If you need to merge code of two different accounts, uh, you have to identify what kind of account. If there are Git repositories, it is possible, but then it is very time consuming. Let's do one thing. Let's take one of the yeah, Wireshark. Wireshark, you will be surprised to know that Wireshark is an actual tool used by network administrators. And the entire project is actually hosted on GitLab. Fine, you can see the source code. And this is what open source really is. When I say Wireshark is open source, that means its source code is somewhere there on some open source platform. And you can go and read it. Here it is. So you can see the entire source code is here, but I'm not interested in the source code itself. Let's do one thing. Let's go to the plan option here. Now this is the project plan. Can you see how many issues or how many, uh, you can say tasks they currently have open? There are 991 open tasks, 18,000 closed, and in general, total task is all 19,000. This is a community project, basically. Thousands of developers are actually working on it as of now. Right? There is a feature called issue board. Let's see how issue board looks alike. How many of you have used Jira, by the way? Do you think Jira also creates this type of a dashboard? Yes. So this is a replacement of it, basically. You can create your issues and explore them. Now, either you view the issues as a list. Now, let me tell you those people who have agile background, 
this is basically your uh, something called product backlog. What do we call it? Product backlog. What are the things yet to be implemented? Okay. Now, some of them are not actually the user stories or functions. Some of them are just bugs and issues created. Like this one is a bug. Flag is setting always falls in Wireshark version 3.6.2 hyphen 2. And this bug is already closed 20 hours back by somebody called Dasha Jyotish. Right? Okay, fine. Issue board. Now, this is the Agile board, Kanban board. You will notice this team, they are currently working on these issues or these stories. Okay, so these are the open stories. These are the one they are currently working on. This is work in progress. And the last one is closed one. Is that clear? Yes. Now, one more thing. Do you know those people who work with Agile? They always say that in Agile, we use incremental and iterative approach. We don't build everything at once, but we split it into several iterations. Some people who use Scrum, they call it sprint instead of iteration, but that's fine. But is there some way I can manage the iterations? You can see the option here as well. Now, these are the iterations. Okay, looks like uh, there is no iteration cadence defined by this particular open source project. Now, this is surprising. Why this is surprising? Because almost every open source project that uses, is it possible? Yes, Manish, it is possible. I'll explain you in two minutes. So iterations, you can see they are not actually maintaining it, but ideally all Agile projects maintain iterations here. Wikis for the documentation. You can use a uh, uh, markdown language to create this type of this type of wiki pages. And there are lots of wiki pages or documentation pages already maintained here. Do you know that you have an alternative to this in Atlassian group of uh, tools? Do you know what is an alternative to wikis? If you are using Atlassian Jira. Confluence, yes, that's right. It's an alternative to Confluence. You also can go for the requirements. Now you can notice, you will notice there is an option for requirement capture, but it looks like this project team is not using that. That's fine, no worries. So first option was the project planning. What is the second option here? Code. Now this is the version control system we are talking about. Let's see how many repositories do they have. And you will notice this is their source code repository, the actual Git repository. Yes. You want to see how many branches they have? This is the list of branches. Right now they have so many different active branches at the same time. And these are the list of commits. If you want to see commits in a particular branch, just select the branch and they will show you how many commits they have. Yes. Now this is the commit message. This is the author who did the commit and this is the commit ID. Now I have a very simple question for you. Any guess what this green symbol means? The green tick mark. What do you guess? Just guess it what it is. Successful build. You are right, Mayur. It's not current head. Uh, yes, Manish, you can do that. Manish, uh, for all your questions, fortunately or unfortunately, all those answers take us to the same place. You need to use ultimate version of GitLab. In ultimate version of GitLab, in paid version of GitLab, you can limit access to your project to a limited people. Rather, you can integrate it with your identity management tool, let's say as your Active Directory. Okay. You can also customize GitLab for your organization so that instead of writing GitLab.com, instead of writing GitLab.com, 
you just have to write gitlab.mahindra.com provided mahindra.com is your organization domain are you getting my point hello and then make sure that it is available only to your corporate network so if somebody tries gitlab.mahindra.com from open internet they will get no host found or no route to host found or something similar to that but when you try it within a corporate network you will be able to access it is that clear so you can keep it private this one is the free version of gitlab please remember if you use free version of gitlab your project is automatically considered as open source project. Is that clear? So in case if your organization wants to use GitLab, obviously for organization, you will not use free version of GitLab. You will have to use a paid version of GitLab, maybe professional or ultimate version, which will keep your application and data completely isolated from others. And yes, uh, yes, Siva Kumar. The console is very different from Bitbucket because Bitbucket do not actually provide all the features. Rather now, Bitbucket actually depends on Jira for project management. I guess Bitbucket has also introduced agile project management features right in the portal, right? I didn't check that for last uh, more than two years now. I have a Bitbucket account uh, that I did not even sign in for two years. Okay, they might introduce new features anyways uh fine so you will notice finally this point this means the pipeline is passed what do you mean by pipeline passed it has multiple meaning first this particular uh code change yes you can upgrade from premium to ultimate manish so what is number one this particular change has triggered a CI pipeline and that CI pipeline was able to successfully build it. Whereas this symbol here means canceled, pipeline canceled. Either it was taking too long or developers understood that this change is not acceptable and they just canceled it. Okay. Uh, usually canceled actually means, let me tell you what is the practical meaning of canceled. All open source projects. All open source projects are free project hosted on GitLab. And when I say free project, there is a limit on how much time you can run a build. Now, build is taking too long. We cancel the build because we are running out of the available build time. Available build time for open source project is 400 minutes per month. Are you getting my point? Yes. So if your build time is too long, you cancel the build of those pipelines to save the cost. Fine. So you can see commits. You can see tags. If you have applied any kind of tags on the Git repository, Git branches, you can see the tags. Tags usually are used to identify a particular commit for the future reference. Usually release tags. RC here are release candidates. RC0, RC1, and so on. You can compare version, you can access code snippets, you can access locked file. This is all part of version control features available in GitLab. Next is build. Now, this is the interesting feature. This is where you will implement your CI CD workflows. You will notice there are pipelines here, build pipelines. Okay, now please remember the pipeline is a generic term. Pipeline could be a CI pipeline or CD pipeline, or it could be both. Now, did you notice as of now, this is a live project, by the way, as of now, there are two pipelines currently running. Did you notice that? Hello? Gerald Combs, he has made changes in two different branches, release 4.2 and release 4.2. Zero. He has made some changes in these two different releases and they are both undergoing a build right now. Can you see this? Hello? Let's have a look.
looks like this person has, is not using English language. Probably. You can actually see the pipeline is running and you can see the log is getting captured over here. It's still going on. Now, please remember, even though it is an open source project, you cannot interrupt anything in here. You cannot go and cancel the build. You can just be a watcher. You can watch it as a guest user. You cannot make any comment. You cannot make any changes. You cannot stop any process. Are you getting my point? Hello? Yep. And you will notice one thing. The pipeline is running for longer time. It's running for 38 minutes, 55 seconds. You will notice that. I guess for more popular open source project, GitLab might be giving them additional build time. That's why they are able to, you know, they are using pipelines which are running for, you know, several hours. The timeout for this pipeline was set to 12 hours. Okay, let me show you one pipeline which has successfully run. This is the pipeline which has successfully passed. You get the records, older records, where older pipeline, their flow you can read. So this was the pipeline run five hours earlier, and you can see the complete log of this pipeline. Yep. Fine. So these were the pipelines. Now, please remember pipeline is a document and job is the actual execution. If you want to see the pipeline, you should go to the pipeline option here. And from the pipeline option, I can show you how the pipeline looks alike. Let me click on the name of the pipeline. And. OK, right now it's running and these are. This is the code of this particular pipeline. This is the code for it. Let's go to the pipeline, the actual pipeline and wait for it. So looks like this is not the pipeline. This is the execution log of the pipeline. To view the pipeline, what I have to do is I have to go back to the code and let me show you the actual pipeline file. Code repository and in GitLab, the actual pipeline is always stored in a separate dot GitLab. Uh, wait a second, where is the file dot GitLab CI? Yeah, here it is. Did you notice a file called .gitlabci.yml? Here it is. Now this is the exact same structure even AWS code will use. You have to define the stages. Like for this particular project, we have build, analyze, test, fuzz asan, fuzz rand, pkt, valkyrie. Okay, these are the stages. These are the variables defined. And then finally, some conditional our triggers. And after that, these are the build stages. This is what to do in build stage. This is what to do in test stage. Uh, the language used here is YAML. This file actually is a YAML file. OK. Yeah, the syntax used here is YAML. And this is exactly same YAML format or YAML style even used in other CI CD tools like Azure Pipeline, GitHub Actions, and AWS Code Build, Build Spec. They all use YAML nowadays. The script is little lengthy, by the way. Don't worry, I will show you a very basic or common example where YAML file is still readable for you. So, what I will do is I'll just go back to GitLab homepage. And from GitLab homepage, let me take you to my project, Maven Demo. This is a simple Spring Boot project I have created some time back. And for this project, this is my GitLab CI file. Did you notice my GitLab CI file? How many steps are there? There are two steps or there are two stages, build and sast. In build stage, I'm using, in build stage, I'm using Maven command. What is the Maven command I'm using in build stage? Clean install. So build my Java project. And from this particular step, I will get a dot jar file generated by Maven. I just want to capture that dot jar file. Now I'm using asterisk 
wild card character because I don't know what is the name of the file. I just know that it would be in a target folder and it would have jar extension. I need to capture this file. Discard rest of the contents. And what is the other stage? SAST stage. This is where I want to run static analysis, static application uh, security test. I want to run and create a report and give that report this name. Is that clear? Hello? These are the Maven options. And uh, before script, it will use the Maven cache folder. Uh, one user, one thing why I'm using this is because Java Maven projects sometimes take too long. And if you are running it for the first time, it has to download the dependencies. But if you run it for the second time, you don't have to download the dependencies again. It will use the previously downloaded dependency. That's why all the configuration I have done. Anyways. For building this project, I will be using a container image Maven 3 with OpenJDK 11. This is where what GitLab actually does. Now, GitLab is very smart when it comes to build agent. All GitLab build agents are basically virtual machines with container platform like Docker pre install. What they do every time you run a build, it creates a new container. You have to specify what container image to use. It will launch a new container and it will use that container as a build agent. Are you getting my point? Hello? So this Maven build will actually happen inside this new container. So that you don't have to do any setup on your build agent. Anyway, so this is the pipeline. This is the pipeline I have created. And in case if you want to see like how this pipeline has executed earlier, Let's go to the build pipeline and let's see whether this build pipeline has executed in past. You will notice one thing. Most of the time it has actually failed instead of passing. Seven months ago, this was the last one and looks like it gave me an, a warning. Let me check why there was a warning or why it actually did not successfully run. So it looks like the build phase was completed successfully, but the test phase has given me some error. Let's see why it is. Uh, image is not saved on GitLab Mayur. Please remember the image which I am using there is actually from Docker Hub. It was a Docker Hub image. It is from public container registry. Obviously, when you use it for your private projects for you within your organization, you must use your own self-hosted or self-managed container registry there. OK, so this is the complete log. I can see it here. Container scanning was actually been implemented here. And you can see it has no files to upload. No files to upload container report dot JSON. It is actually not creating any such file. It has not created any such file, unfortunately. It gets executed inside a container on the build agent. I will explain that. OK. Let me check if it has generated any artifact. Looks like when it was successful, it has generated an artifact called job log. Yeah, right. This was a container uh, build, so it will not generate any kind of uh, jar or var file. Yeah. OK. Now let's go back to the build. Where exactly build gets executed? Chetan has this question. Just like many other DevOps or CI CD platform, it requires a build agent. Now, what makes GitLab interesting? GitLab has three different types of build agents. Let me explain you all of them. What I will do is I will go to the settings button. These are my project settings. And inside project settings button, I will go for CI CD settings. Now, these are the CI CD settings for my current project. So, when I go to CI CD settings, there are options available like Auto DevOps and Runners. Let's go to the Runners. GitLab call, GitLab don't call them agent, GitLab call them Runners. And now, GitLab has three different categories of Runners. Now, what are those categories? 
The first category of runner is project runner. What is project runner? A build agent dedicated for this project only, and it will not be used by any other project. Dedicated runners, we call them project runner. Project runners are not automatically created for you. You have to establish them. You have to set up them. You have to use them, configure them. Okay, and then we also get some kind of public runners, which we call them shared runners. You can notice one thing. There are several shared runners already available. The total number of shared runners available for my open source project is 101. But just because they are available, that does not mean they can actually be used for building your project. There might be a possibility that they might be busy with building somebody else project. Did you notice this? One, two, three, four. The first four are already building some something, but there is this fifth one, which is now green. What do you mean by the green? It's already there on my screen tip. Read that. What is it? It means it's available. So all those with green, they are available. All those with red, they are not available. So out of 101, there are few runners which are available. This is second category. And what is third category? Group runners. Now, what is group runner? Instead of creating a project runner, instead of creating a project runner which is dedicated to one project, you can instead create group runner which is available to more than one project. So you create group runner and that group runner can be shared with multiple projects. Does that make sense? So can you tell me how many different runners I explained to you just now? And what are they? Yes, I explained to you three different runners, project runner, shared runners, and group runners. Okay, shared runners or instance runners are open source runners. Please remember, in case of dedicated self-hosted GitLab, in case of self-hosted GitLab, you would mostly use project and group runners, not the shared runners. Is that clear? Hello? And the reason is not even technical. It's non-technical. There might be a compliances. There might be a certain compliances where your customer, where your client says that you cannot take my application, either source or binary, to third-party vendor's machine. Are you getting my point? And when you use shared runners, your application, your code would be built on a third-party system somewhere on cloud. Yeah. OK. Fine. So these are the agents where you run it. And by the way, is it is it easier to set up your own runner? Yes. If you go to this new runner button, you can set up your own dedicated runner for the project. You can apply a tag. Tag will actually help you to identify the runner and then runner description, and whether log this particular runner to the single project, or you are ready to share it. Maximum job timeout, create runner. When you click create runner, it will create a script. It will create a script, and that script you have to run inside the real machine. Then that machine will be registered as a runner. So there is a lengthy steps involved here. You have to set up your own runners like this. Is that clear? Yeah. You have to take the script and run it somewhere. So let's say, for example, I will create a runner called runner one. That would be the tag. Allow untagged pipelines also to run there. Runner description is, let's say, a demo runner. Okay. And 
I am not using any of these uh, uh, properties. Runner timeout is 30 minutes. And when I click on create runner button, oh, wait a second, it should be 10 minutes, not 30. Because job timeout, maximum timeout need to be at least 10 minutes. And this is second, this 30 minutes, 30 seconds. How to make it at least 10 minutes? At least 10 minutes means 300 seconds, sorry, 600 seconds. 600 seconds would be 10 minutes timeout. Create the runner. So when I click on create the runner, it will then generate a script for you. But for generating a script, you have to specify what operating system you will be using. Like, for example, if you want to install runner in a Linux machine, select Linux. If it is Mac, select Mac. If it is Windows, select Windows. And then it will generate a script for you. Can you see this? Yeah. You have to first install GitLab runner binary file. You can use this link to know how to install it in your machine and then run this script. Everything is included. GitLab runner register URI is gitlab.com and this is the access token. Yes, Manish. You can link a runner with your individual CI workload, a CI pipeline, basically. Okay. Yeah. So when you go to the CI pipeline, let me just take you back to the pipeline. And let me show you where the runner is specified. OK. So this is my pipeline, for example. Let's go to the jobs. These were the jobs which I've run so far. And for each job, I can show you where exactly this job run, basically. So if I click on this job status, it shows this previous job has failed, but let's try to find out where did it run. Can you see the option here? Name of the runner. Hello. One blue SAS Linux small AMD 64 runner. That means this is one of the shared runners. Are you getting my point? Yep. And if you go to the pipeline editor, you can, of course, edit the pipeline. Let's go to the pipeline editor. Looks like the pipeline editor is just like this. And these are the steps here. Now, one thing interesting here is for this particular project, for this particular project, it's not declared anywhere which particular build agent to use or what kind of build agent to use. So what you do here in that case? Wait a second. This is build. We don't have pipeline schedule created. We are not running any schedule. Pipeline editor, nothing is specified. So we need to go to, uh, yeah, you can use uh, uh, public runners. Right now I'm using public runner only. Let's go to the CI CD, CI CD settings. And under CI CD settings, if I click on general pipeline, allow public pipelines, allow at a cancel, prevent, use cache. Okay, fine. Everything is done there. One hour timeout. Runners. You can notice one thing. The currently available runners, you will notice here the tick uh, checkbox here. Did you notice this? Hello. This means these runners are enabled, but there is no project runner. So you have to assign a runner and this is the newly created runner which i did not configure so let me remove it when i click on new project runner this was created but i didn't do the installation so it is of no use to me right okay yeah so this was about ci cd the build agents or uh, build pipeline please remember one thing the structure here, the structure here, uh, 
uh, or the pipeline itself is written in YAML, but it has its own schema. You have to understand what are the stages, then what are the steps, okay, and what are the variables, basically. Three important components. Let's see the usage quota. Uh, looks like for this particular project, this is the usage background. This project for job artifact, build artifact, I'm using 76 MB. My source code repository has consumed 18.3 KB. Okay. Is that clear? And my container registry is occupying 354 MB of space. Now, what is this container registry? As I told you, GitLab has everything managed. The entire Java project was built as a container image, and you don't have to upload that container image to any container registry. There is a container registry built inside GitLab, and this is GitLab's own container registry where my project is already uploaded or published. It was published seven months ago, as you can see. If you want details, you can see the details. You will notice the repository address is this. Mahindra underscore demos. This is the name of my GitLab project. Maven demo one. Is that clear? For monitoring, we have incident management. We have integration with service desk. Now I don't have any in incidents recorded. I have integrated service desk. Now please remember, if you want to use service desk, this feature is actually not available to free tier users. OK, because for that you have to connect it to users. OK, and in order to connect to your organization users, you have to purchase either the business or ultimate edition of GitLab to do this type of setup. Let's see the anal analytics, value stream analytics. You will get certain kind of a reports, OK? Like, for example, uh, any report with issues, any reports about planning. Now, I'm not using this. Any reports related to the code? Let's see if code related issues are there. Uh, no. Anything about test? I guess I have not written any test also. Anything about uh, reviews? No. Staging, no. For this project, no report is available because other than CI CD pipeline, I did nothing else. Yeah. Contributor analytics. Again, this will be available for project where there are multiple contributors. Looks like for this project, there is only one contributor here. Oh, two of them. I have made contributions using two different email addresses. So this is from my Hotmail account. This is from my Synergetics account. And you can see seven commits here, one commit here. CI CD analytics, all these are reports basically. You will see all the reports here, pipelines. Looks like all my pipelines executed in November 2023. And since then, I have not run any pipeline. So the report is created like this. Is that clear? Any questions so far about the pipeline aspect? Anyone? For environment specific errors, what you will do is uh, if there is an error about error related to an environment, your pipeline, CD pipeline will then fail. Continuous deployment pipeline will fail. And as soon as you get the failure in continuous deployment pipeline, you should capture all those details and add them here as an issue in the project panel here. You should add issue in here. And by the way, there is also one more possible feature available. In case if you are already using Jira, you can integrate Jira with GitLab. Provide the title, details, right? You can assign it to someone. You can set the milestone. You can set the due date, everything. You capture it like this. Is that clear? So we have project where you can create issues board. Issues are basically for workload planning. You can use your product backlog, your scrum back backlog. You can track the task. You have a Kanban-like dashboard where if the task is currently work in progress, you drag and drop in work in progress column. 
But if it is done, you drag it in the completed column. Feature proposals can be recorded as issues. Service request can be recorded as issues and bug tracking. Bugs are also recorded in the issues panel. This is how it looks once the issues panel is ready. Issues board is ready. You will notice for most of the issues, you can apply some kind of some kind of flags like these are the flag to do back end deliverable front end. These are the flags and all the flags are user defined by the way. Pipelines, you have jobs, you have stages and you have runners. You need to define all the stages in the same dot GitLab CI dot YML file. You define the build stage, test stage and deployment stage. Now please remember this is just a sample format. Not necessary. All your project will use three stages. Your projects might use one stage, two stage, three stage or even 10 stages. It is totally user defined. You define how many stages you want. Are you getting my point? Hello. And what if you are building a full stack application? There is a front end written in Node.js and back end written in Python or Java. In that case, you have to build both of them. So in build stage, you build a front end and back end parallel. In test stage, you build you test front end and back end parallel. Right in deploy, you deploy both of them. And if your application is three, four or five year, those many number of uh, you can say concurrent stages you need to have. Any question about pipelines, by the way? This is how a pipeline will look alike, a very basic pipeline syntax. This pipeline is not actually building anything. It will just display a message. All the eco statements will simply run and display a message on screen. That's it. OK, then. This is just a continuation of the simple basic pipeline I have dis discussed with you. You can have artifacts. The build artifacts can be collected as a packages, jar file, war file, DLL file, or container images. While giving you a demo on Azure pipeline, uh, sorry, uh, GitLab pipeline, I gave you an example of the artifacts. There was one uh, container registry created by GitLab, and all the Container images are uploaded there. My container image currently has around 300 MB of size. You can use that as a tool. GitLab CI.yaml is the file where you provide all the CI CD configuration. GitLab runners, as I told you earlier, we have loop runners, we have shared runners, and we have project runners. Shared runners are open source or public runners, they are available to all GitHub users. Group runners are your own runners that can be shared between multiple projects of you only. And project runners are dedicated project runners. OK. Runner basically means the agent. So that's it. Any question about the GitLab platform, anyone? Any question, any queries you have? OK, by the way, uh, Archie has shared a feedback form over a message uh, on, a, on a chat window right now. So uh, kindly please go through the feedback form and provide your valuable feedback for this session. I will remain logged in for another 10 minutes. So if anybody has any kind of question about GitLab as a platform, please post your question on a chat window. I will answer it. Yep.
Uh, hello guys, before leaving the session, make sure you guys fill this feedback form. Okay, COBOL on mainframe can use GitLab. Uh, frankly speaking, I never uh, tried COBOL here, but uh, technologically speaking, anything for which you can set up a build agent, you can uh, build and manage that here. But I'm not sure whether containerization supports mainframe. Difference between Git Bash and GitLab. Uh, Amit, Git Bash is a CLI, command line interface. What it actually provides is a compatible Git runtime on Windows machine. Okay, it's not same or it's not related to GitLab either. Can we use other container repository with GitLab? Yes, you can use other container repository with GitLab. Okay, like for example, you can use JFrog container registries, artifact container registries. You can use Azure container registries. You can use Elastic container registries from AWS and so on. Only thing is, if you use any third party container registry, yeah, if you use any third party container registry, you will have to then use, you will have to then use uh, some kind of secrets or connection to the third party container registry. You have to provide a proper uh, connectivity between them, credentials you have to provide. Without those credentials, it won't be able to connect. If you want to see existing pipelines, what you can do is there is a sample uh, pipelines available here. What you can do is the best way to learn more about it is exploring community project. So to show you an example, what I will do is I will hit explore community project or explore project icon on the home page. And here you can search for a particular programming language, let's say Java. So you will get all the programming languages which are using Java programming language, for example. Let's say ja language is equal to Java. OK, let's search if there is any sample project which is made in Java. OK, let's take, for example, uh, the one question about COBOL. I'm not sure whether it is available. No, it, there is no such uh, existing project available, unfortunately. OK, so you can search for it like let's say. React. You can explore the projects. Basically, if you have any kind of projects here, you can also get CI CD catalog where you get a dedicated workflows, CI CD workflows here. Like for example, uh, T 
these are the workflows for not many different kind of uh, tools like this is for example for python right then this one is for terraform for example for containers container build what you can do is go back to ci cd and search for the docker one So these are the case studies for Docker. Like for example, this one is called Docker. Right? You can see the complete explanation for it. Okay? How to include or how to build it. Right? And what are the input variables you can use for this workflow? You can include this workflow directly in your current workflow. And you can use, in case if you are using third-party container registry like ACR, ECR, you need to provide these input variables registry user and registry password that's how it will be able to you know connect and authorize to use third party container registry so in short now gitlab is basically a very big end to end devops platform now when i say end to end devops platform it has all these features built into it it can manage agile project as a replacement for jira you don't need a separate jira it can be it, it it can be used as a replacement for github it provides its own uh, repository source code repository it even provide its own ide for direct development on cloud it has continuous integration as a replacement like jenkins replacement it has its own artifact management replacement for jfrog it has container scanning built into it so you don't need snake you can use gitlab built in features you have dependency management, vulnerability management. You have release orchestration, infrastructure as a code, and you even have service desk integration and all. Most of these features, please remember when, uh, when we are looking at these features, most of these features are available to the ultimate version. The one we are using is free version. Best interesting thing here is unlike many other cloud-based platforms, SaaS platform, GitLab, do not even ask you for debit and credit card. Do you know that most other cloud-based platform, even to sign up on free trial basis, you need to provide your debit and credit card details. And then only they will give you 30 days trial. On GitLab, on the other hand, there are two interesting things. There is no mention of duration. It's always free. There is no 30 days limit, right? Per user per month, zero. And there is no need to provide a credit card. Right, but the number of features available are limited. Ultimate will give you more features, and this is actually for businesses. There is also additional feature GitLab provide called GitLab Duo, which is actually an AI assistant. AI assistant means it will actually generate suggestions for you. If you feel, let's say, lazy, GitLab Duo will even explain the code to you, will generate the Docker files for you will make changes to the code for you. You just ask it and it will help you with that. It's an AI assistant similar to Git, uh, GitHub Copilot, for example, or ChatGPT. OK. OK. Yeah, that's it for today's session. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining the session. I hope we'll meet again in some other uh, similar session, which will be, uh, which might we might have in a, a schedule or in a pipeline in near future. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Over to you, Archie. Thank you, sir, for this grateful session. Guys, please don't forget to fill this feedback form. I already shared on the chat box.